So, welcome. My name is Lisa, and today we're going to do the letter A in a medieval style with watercolor, with pen and ink, and we're going to use a pencil and eraser first to draw it, and then we're going to use the pen and ink to outline it, and then we're going to use the watercolor to paint it in. So, I'm going to do a style that has the pillar on the right. So this is sort of like a letter I. That gives us one area to be painting in. We'll have a top area feel like I have to sneeze. Sorry about that. Of course, you can use whatever flourishes you want. Alright. We've got a base, a shape. Now, the person I'm doing this for likes Pomeranians. And let me see if I can take a poke at their Facebook page and see if they have a picture of theirs. Now, I'm not trying to exactly draw <laughs> their dog because that could be tricky. Alright. So this is going to be tricky because it's white. <laughs> but we will get something to work. Sort of like a pig and not like a dog. Well, now that I've said that, it's even more like a pig. Hmm. Let's try a little bit of googling. Maybe if we had it facing us.
That'll be a good shot. Alright, what else should we put in this picture? We'll put in a little Japanese lantern. That way. The window here. All right. That worked out reasonably well. you want to in these spaces that you left. highlights. I'm just looking to see where I put my metallics. Alright, I found my copper. red and gold. That would be fine. All right. So now I'm going to choose a brush size that will hopefully fit into these little nooks and crannies. So I'm going to use this one, which is a five. All right, you would use whichever one seem to work well for you. Wait, that's good. This is my sleepy. Have to do the uh, inking part first. How are you guys doing today? Good morning. It's a good idea to turn your paper while you're working on things so that the flow of your hand stays as smooth as possible.
what we are doing as well. I ended up staying up very, very late last night, so I think I got about two hours of sleep. Working on my origami YouTube channel. Trying to get a bunch of videos complete for that. So, I am still waking up. after this set of videos is done and I get Laura started, I'm going to take a nap. <laughs> so hopefully you guys can hear me fine. I will try to make sure that I speak up for the important parts. And I'm happy to chat in the comments if you have any comments or questions or anything you'd like to talk about. Alright, so we got the A part done. So we've got a letter A. We've got something that looks sort of like a <laughs> small white puppy. And we've got a little Japanese lantern. So now we're going to start coloring this in. Now we'll note that ink dries very, very quickly, but it does not necessarily dry instantaneously. So to give it at least half a breath to make sure that it dries before we start hopefully not smearing it. You don't have to erase all the pencil lines, but in that particular case I'd gone in a little different direction than I had originally drawn, so I want to remove those extra spots. Now I talked about doing red and gold. Gold isn't one of the colors that I use in my main kit, so I'll just put a little over here so I have it available to work with. And which red do I want to work with? Maybe the crimson, which is six over from the left. idea to think about the person that you're painting the letter for and think about some things that would be interesting to them and what would you like to include 
You can of course just do a letter without any sorts of additional shapes at all, or you can do generic things like flowers, or butterflies, whatever kinds of things come to mind. But if you're making your letter for a particular person, and you know that they like particular kinds of interests, then it can be fun to put a few little items in there that have special meaning. How has your week been going? Have everything been going pretty smoothly? I highly recommend meditation as a way to find calm. Serenity. The world likes to throw lots of challenges at us. But if we can just take a breath and remember that things are always going to be changing, and that's part of the nature of life. It's something that's going to keep happening. And we have to find a way to accept that that is what's going to happen. Don't have to like it. I just accept it's the nature of the universe and that we move forward and do what we can with what we've got. There are times in life that we wish things would just stay the way they were. And then there were other times in life when we wish things would just change to do something else. So we're always trying to fight to have something go in a particular direction. And life generally doesn't work like that. <laughs> it's good to make plans, work in a direction that you want but also to realize that the universe just has plans of its own. It's part of my work on my Japanese origami page. I've been rereading a number of my books on meditation and mindfulness and so on. And there are good things to read and reread and to remind ourselves of those kinds of points. People for thousands of years have thought about these same kinds of basic issues that the world is changing. People have said it's been changing since the earliest days of horses and carriages. It certainly seems like things are changing more quickly than ever nowadays compared to the speed at which things changed perhaps in the Middle Ages. But there always have been things people have worried about. You know, if we think health issues are bad for us now, imagine what they were like in the Dark Ages when they didn't understand how most medicines worked, or how most illnesses worked, or anything else. We are grateful to be living in modern times, where at least we have a fighting chance. But it is still challenging. Filling in all the pieces. So 
So the more you paint, the more you get used to staying within lines, leading your designs and so on. It's a good exercise to try to paint every day. You don't have to paint anything complicated. Just do some sort of a random abstract scribble. Just use a couple colors. But the more that you just have a brush in your hand every day, you do a little bit of practicing, the more it becomes second nature. And you know, that's pretty much true with anything in life. If you want to learn to play guitar, if you do a little bit of practicing every day, then you get better and better at it. Color is a practice of layers. So it's good to let something dry a little, come back, add another layer. Let it dry a little, come back, add another layer. that a moment to dry. If you are working with colors and one area is wet and then you work in another area that's touching it, like if I work in the center area, and that new area is wet, then there's a temptation for the wet paints to all merge together into one big wet blob and then all the colors will blend. And in a case like that, that is not the effect that we are going for. <laughs> Now I can work on the little lantern. Alright, the white dog is white, so I suppose I could paint it in with a little extra white just to highlight it as being different from the white of the paper. Normally watercolor you just use the white of the paper. But I want it to look like there's a little something special there. So we got a dog, we got an A, we got a Chinese lantern. Alright, it looks like the red and the A is drying enough. I'm looking at the glistening of the paint 
to try to judge that to be able to put in the gold of the center area. And also this gold paint is fairly thick. It's already starting to sort of burn here, so I think that it should be fairly safe to not lend. to the edges here of the paint so that I don't get lots of red coming out and blending into this new gold that I'm putting down. Careful in the nook, not to get too close to that wood. In medieval manuscripts, they often illuminated the initial capitals with bright colors and with gold and silver. So it's nice to add a little touch of gold and silver into these mirror that. Alright, I think that the outside red is dry enough now that I can put in some Little dot highlights. Dots in the center, so I should be a little bigger. Here we go. Alrighty. Alrighty. 
reasonably pleased with that. So it's a little hard to see in the video, but the gold has a shimmer to it. So I think that has a nice level of detail. I'm tempted even to add another something down the middle of the gold stripe. I just put that down so that's still fairly wet. Yeah, that's still a little wet. Alright, so if I wanted to do anything else to the gold part, but, you know, maybe I should leave it alone. Start to add too many different things and it becomes a little too filled with extra details. So there's a middle ground in there somewhere where there's enough to make it have a bit of detail without going overboard. That is always up to you as an artist how much you want to add in there. Alright, so we've got a letter A. And of course you can make your A any way you want to, with any sorts of details or flourishes or colors or anything else. Your A is the way you wish to make it. <laughs> 